There is a moment in Advent when the words are silenced, the story untold, and the waiting begins. A time when throats are stopped and the frustration grows, the prophecy pauses, and time has to run its course. Such time is now, Zechariah's time of waiting, dreaming, imagining, silently. Until the moment the silence runs out, the dam bursts, the words flow, and a dream for the world is named and born. It is Advent, and the promise is on its way. I'm Rory Hamilton, the, the Minister of New Kilpatrick Parish, and thank you for letting us share your Advent today and lighting two candles on this Sunday in Advent. Today we travel with Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, who, on hearing he was going to be a father, was silenced for the length of Elizabeth's pregnancy. What happens in that silence? I'm sure he wasn't twiddling his thumbs, enjoying the experience, but was angry and frustrated. But perhaps also it was a time for him to think, to imagine and reimagine, shape new words and ideas. Because when finally the words did spill and he named his child John, Luke has given him a song to sing, broad and generous about God's kingdom, of justice for the poor and the preparation for God's ways. It took the silence to silence the present thoughts, the, the traditions he was living now, and bring to birth an ancient promise that he now found breathing again in the lungs of his son. Loving God, may we find the silences of Advent and find in them a safe place of imagination and dreams. May we hush the noise and hold our breath for promise, for hope, for incarnation. God, found in the silences, may we meet you there 
where words are beyond us and silence meets us and we can dream with you the ancient thoughts lying dormant within that seek now their time to be fulfilled and come to life, animate themselves once more. In such an Advent gift of time and silence and hope and preparation, may we stir again your promises and prophecies and hear the words of justice again, see the shape of peace again, feel the way of love again in the noise of an infant. Loving God, light within us and hope around us, may we travel with you, find the silences that hold you and hold a promise and may we make time to wait and have ears to hear It's quickening. Hear us in the global prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Zechariah was a priest, righteous before God, living the commandments blamelessly, old now in years and without children. In the temple... It was time to draw lots as to whom it was that would enter the holy sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. It so happened that the dice rolled in Zechariah's favour and with as much pride as nerves, Zechariah entered the Holy of Holies. Outside, the whole assembly was praying. Inside, Zechariah was alone. Except he wasn't. A holy messenger appeared to him. He was terrifying and Zechariah was terrified. Not just with the messenger, but with the message. Your prayer has been answered. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will name him John. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. Zechariah was speechless. And that was only the first time that day. How will I know this is so? For I am an old man. My wife is getting on in years, he muttered when he found his voice again. I am Gabriel, said Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. But because you are slow to believe my words, you will run out of them and find them only the day these things come about. And there was silence from then on. Even when Elizabeth became pregnant and nurtured the gift for nine months and gave birth to a son, there was silence. The neighbours rejoiced. Zechariah was unable to say a word. On presenting the child at the temple, Elizabeth said said that her son was to be called John. Everyone joined Zechariah in silence because this was not a family name. Zechariah called for a writing slate and wrote... His name is John. Zechariah felt as if a plug had been pulled. His throat unstopped. His mind was able to form words again and he gushed with them. Beautiful, poetic, laughter-filled words. And everyone else now fell silent and listened. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to us ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant 
the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. A new child will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Those words we've just heard were not original to Zechariah. The writers of scripture have this style of giving to important people important words. They were written in hindsight almost. It is often only after events that you see them as being important. So with Zechariah, the old father of John the Baptist, but look who John the Baptist became, look what he did and said, look what he made possible. So his birth must have been unique. And so the silent Zechariah is given a voice. And what he says is the hope of the people now harboured in a new setting. Things are possible again. These old promises from the ancients, remember them, the, the very words of the, the song he sings are those ancient promises and you'll find them back in the Hebrew scriptures. These old promises are still alive. the evenings I feel are dark it's the mornings I get up and it's a long time before the light comes for the day and when it does it's gray and weak <laughs> why don't we just all just stay in our beds you know it's not as if we can easily emigrate at the moment so you know bed the best option and some mornings I just linger I mean I should be working but I just stare at the dark trees and their gnarled branches that break up the ever so slightly lightening sky. But it is a wonder. And, and your thoughts just grow. You're, you're part of a, a season that is bigger than COVID, bigger than your daily routine, bigger than the tasks that are coming up in the day. And that is a good place to be. That's why I am recording this first thing in the morning, waiting in the darkness for the light to come. It's the oldest of Advent themes. We lose the drama a bit when we can just turn on a light, but it is an ancient tradition. But alongside that tradition is another, 
less mentioned, sitting in the silence, waiting for the words to come. This is Zechariah's advent. Can you imagine how much he may have wanted to say, but is not able? Those who have lost their speech for any reason are the only ones who really know what that's like. Today, Zechariah is our model. And I want to ask him, what happens when the words disappear and the silence falls? For Zechariah, it seems that in such a time of silence, something shifts in him. The time without words, where his, he lives with his questions and his doubts and his frustrations and his anger, turns this argumentative old man whose response to Gabriel is that, oh, he's got an old wife, turns him into a poet of impossible justice. In the silence, Zechariah finds a place where hope overtakes the reality he has been so far disappointed with. It's a turning point for the whole story of salvation. From the silence rises hope. Hope beyond the reality of his experience and dreams into the future. And we are quick on Zechariah's words. We want to hear them, their promise, their vision, their turning the world upside down, the advent of God. But perhaps in Advent, before we use any words, we need to hear the silence first. Be damned with explanations and meaning and understanding. For often these are but mirrors of our own passions and favoured doctrines and deep needs. Silence. Silence can feel a vulnerable place. You can make no arguments to back yourself up. Instead, Zechariah found he was in God's hands without distractions. It is a cleansing, refining place, one perhaps which the church should seek for itself during Lent, pausing, reflecting, being without the control of words. Now I imagine I would be utterly lost in freefall for someone who lives by words. But we may find ourselves more open to God's presence and disturbance and see it as an invitation for transformation as Zechariah found. Only then for Zechariah do the words come. A gift of a son and the gift of speech. Zechariah's first words are shaped round this child, investing in his son huge hope, old dreams of redemption, ancient visions of righteousness, justice and renewal are back and projected forward. In some sense, people of faith believe backwards. We see the future in the past. So with Zechariah's song, a great poem of impossible justice, of seeing what God promised and did in the past and projecting that faith into the future via this child. Perhaps this is our time to sit silently and listen to the ancient voices of hope and let them refine us and speak such hope into our future.
Thank you for the invitation to join you again uh, today. We are on the second Sunday of Advent and so we have lots of activities being designed and organised towards Christmas and you can catch up with them in the bulletin which you can download from the website or receive as an email if you give us your email send your email to mail at nkchurch.org.uk and we will send you back the the bulletin each week Um, or you can just download it from the website at nkchurch.org.uk and there on the front page of our website you'll find all the activities this week and all our Zoom uh, meetings and the links are in the email you receive with the, the bulletin. Thank you to Ernest Cormay for reading the passage for us today and to those who created the hymn slides today. So thank you for all those taking part. Please have a good week and we will catch up again next time. But let's draw those thoughts and activities we are taking part in and mingle them and tangle them up in the activities of the world in our prayer for others. Let us pray. Waiting God, waiting for the promise to be born, we are too, longing for the moment of impossible justice for creation and for her to sing again of freedom and new life, longing for the moment of impossible compassion for our communities, for there to be justice for the least, tables set for the hungry, families lifted from poverty, a reckoning for injustice and the ancient song of hope to be fulfilled. Longing for the moment of impossible peace for all those in conflict, fighting another's battles in politics and society, in Yemen and Afghanistan, in Tigray and Syria, across continents with COVID vaccines. Longing for the moment of impossible hope for those excluded in our communities, for those in camps at borders, fearful and scared of trafficking, yet with little other choice, for those because of past or colour or culture or sexuality, given less choice than the majority. Longing for the moment of impossible love for our families and friends, for those ill among us mentally and physically, those vulnerable jobless, trapped. Waiting God, we wait with you for the impossible child to become one of us, human and hope-filled among us. So be it. Amen.
Go in peace in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the common life of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all evermore. Amen.